This episode is sponsored by La Taverna. That restaurant in Abuja where you don't finish the food, the food finishes you. We see Kanye, we see Joe, we see Lil Wayne, and what each of them have done, they're one of these guys who have been able yes. to squeeze out, to, know, to understand their role yep. in the game, yep. and, and to play it to the end, to yeah. the utmost parts. Yep. Right. It's mastery. You know, and they, and they, and they, while surviving. Do you know what? You know? You know, you saying this, uh, right, is, is almost the essence of why I feel like you and I you know, are able to have these conversations. It's it's about understanding oneself, so that self-awareness. So essentially, emotional intelligence in a sense, or situational intelligence, whatever you want to call it. Um, understanding oneself and one's role. But to do that, you have to understand the collective and the collective's goal. Mm. Mm. When you understand the collective's goal, you know your role. My God. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> What makes one great? What separates one great person from another great person? Is it the hours they put in? Is it the consistency? Is it the way they make you feel? Is it the money they make from the things they make? Is it their creative output? What quality stands out to you the most? If you know me, you know I love a good question and a good debate, especially when it's had in good faith. And more than that, I love it when the person I'm debating makes a good argument. My first guest of the year is one of the few people I know who can keep up with me on any subject, on any day. I'm proud to introduce Anyekan Ezekiel, Ani for short. He's a social architect and one of the founders of Yellow Door Initiative. He's tall, bald, soft-spoken, and one of the wisest men I know. We sat down at his apartment to talk music, creativity, mastery, and what differentiates greatness. It was a proper mental spar, Annie and I going back and forth, trying to lay down the superior argument, while ultimately trying to arrive at a truth we can both agree on. This is very different from our usual guest interactions, because usually we speak on things that we both, you know, agree on, you know, we share each other's stories and we just try to help our listeners learn something from our experience. But in this, we had a proper argument about things that are really pointless in a sense, but still important when you're thinking about life in general. So yeah, I'm just really excited to have you guys listen to my friend. He always makes sense. And I'm sure you'll understand soon as you hear his voice. That said, my name is Rodney Omokache and you're welcome. To the young god. Before we begin, here's some context. This conversation begins with me suggesting that Jay-Z's career pales in comparison to artists like Kanye West or Lil Wayne because of their artistic range. I feel like Jay-Z's sound has stayed largely the same over the years, whereas Kanye and Wayne have explored and experimented all kinds of sounds and subject matter. And he begs differ. Enjoy. Okay, so I mean, I get where where you're coming from, Theoretically, right? If, because it was the same issue I had with 50 Cent. Like, hey, they shot you. Yes, you can't shoot. I get. Like, what next, my G? Did you get? It just seemed like year on year, he was willing to stay in that. I'm a gangster. I have nine lives sort of thing. Mm-hmm. When I saw him venture out of that, I'm like, okay, fair enough. Now, the same thing, I think, with Jay-Z. Jay-Z always stayed true to his persona, but he... I think more, more or a better way to understand him isn't so much creatively as it is... Um, Maybe should, I should say objectively, in a sense. Mm. He never minced words. He came in there for the money. So it's what brings the money that he's doing. 
Uh, if he's hoping tomorrow that he's doing, then... Then that nigga got what he wanted. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, that, that's, that's fair. Do you, you get know, but, So now when you understand that that's what he was, he kept saying, like, I mean here, I mean, I mean this for the money. Then you no longer sort of, or rather for me, it no longer, you know, I, I no longer felt a compulsion to even critique his delivery style because I realized what the objective was. It wasn't necessarily for the art of it. But it was, though. I mean, it was for the money. <sighs> It was for the money, but then he did it well. He did it like it wasn't for the money. You know why? Because that's how you get the money. Okay. That's how you get the money. You do it so well, like it ain't for the money, but that's what brings the money. That's excellence. Okay, okay. But then if we're comparing him to all the long list of, of right. rappers yes. who have excelled, yes. and we're trying to put them yes. in a space, yes. just because the money was the thing yes. in the end. Yes. It caps his, 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 his limits. So I, call, I, I think of Jay-Z, not, not, and this is not a fair analogy, but you and I spoke about this as well. In a sense, I can perhaps think of Jay-Z as a kind of Cristiano Ronaldo versus, say, a Messi, which is more, more fantastical, more magical, more fairy tale-y. There's, there's a certain thing that you have with Messi, which is what the people all you know, seem to... I, I, don't, I don't give a fuck about that. Mm. Do you get... I respect a man who can stay consistently number one. And that's the other thing about Jay. Do you get at every point in time he has given people reason with each new body of work, regardless of his rigidity, a re he, he's always given people a reason to say, Omo, we need to consider him. And you know what? In that sense, that's what in that sense, that's how he reminds me of Cristiano. Like you can say, Yeah, yeah, I don't like the, I don't like the it's not the somebody who loves football. We'll probably not give a shit about Cristiano per se. Nigga, what? I can't believe I let this nigga come on my podcast and utter such blasphemy. But wait, there's more. Because there isn't much to love about him as a footballer. There's a lot to respect, admire, covet, but not necessarily love. There, there isn't anything emotional to Cristiano. What? No, no, people have emotional, look, people have emotional responses to, to Vaseline. Like, it does, <laughs> I'm not saying that people don't have emotional responses. I'm saying, what, okay, let me ask the question this way. What is the emotional value of Cristiano Ronaldo? The emotional value of Ronaldo, where do I begin? Okay, it depends where you want to look at it. Are you a Man U fan? Are you a Real Madrid fan? Do you see, do you, do you yeah. see my point? <laughs> okay. You literally have to tack on a context. But what is the love? Now, by, by context, think about how you would answer the same question. What is the emotional value of Messi? Again, are you a Barcelona fan? Are you an Argentina fan? You know, but, but it's, it's still the same, but let, just back to okay, Ronaldo. Okay, okay. The emotional yeah. value of Ronaldo is a guy who came into the English game yes. when it was, you know, at its most shaky, right? Don't forget, that was the time that Beckham had just left. My dear, you are, you are literally having to make a point which negates the entire point of an emotional value. Like, you have to make a logical argument now to make your point now. That's what you're doing. You're, you're showing me history, you're showing me context, so you are right. I'm, I'm not even, let me, let me okay. make the point. Let me, okay. point. let me make the point. Okay, make it. And let me hit this J real quick so that they do that. understand. You do that. So, this is a guy that came into the, to the Premiership right. at 18 when he was desperate for his star. All the stars were in Spain, Figo, Beckham, Ronaldo, all them guys, right? Yep. Whatever. Yeah. And he comes in yeah. with twinkling feet. Yeah. My guy was doing things with the ball that nobody had ever done in the Premiership since JJ. Yes. Only difference was that he was actually good from, it was like JJ came in at his prime. He mm -hmm. was doing what JJ could, could, could do at 18. And right. then he grew Right. Year after year after year, adding free kicks, adding headers, adding production, you know, creating moments that they were so iconic that Real Madrid had to come calling way before he was even ready to go. Right. And then he leaves. And, and not only does he leave, he's already building that. I'm not a humble guy, I speak my mind, I own the pitch, I'm the man. So anyone who respects that is already drawn emotional to that, like this is a guy but that How I many can... people in the world do you think respect that sort of thinking? More than you think, because... Again, I mean compared to... Uh, anyway, fair enough, go ahead. More than you think, right? Right. But, okay. you know, and he does that 
And at, it, at every moment, what is he doing? He's winning, he's, he's, he's creating what they call match winners, game winners. Yeah, yeah. Moments that where you need him the most. So a hero you can depend on. That is an, that's, that's huge emotional, that's legendary status. And then you now attack on the numbers, year in, year out. And then Messi, I think that Messi to the story in that he's yeah. competing against a guy who was born for football. Who was born with this talent? Do you now? You see, I'm glad you add, added Messi at this point. So maybe that that provides a good segue now. Mm -hmm. What is the emotional value of Messi? The emotional value of Messi is a player who does things. And I dare you to. In fact, I will pay you mm -hmm. to finish describing and not mention God or anything heavenly. In your description of Messi, because you've spoken about context for Cristiano Ronaldo, you've spoken about. I wasn't going to mention anything godly. Okay, let's go ahead. Please but, go but ahead. I was going to mention finesse. Okay. You know, I was going to mention, you know, a like genius. I was going to genius that I even forgot to mention with Ronaldo, but it's just different. Like Messi is Messi is, is very. I'll say it like this, right? Ronaldo hits a target that no one can hit. Mm -hmm. Messi hits a target that no one can see. What are you speaking to when you make that analogy? I'm speaking to the fact that Messi has something. And what would that thing be? Magic. Yeah. Right? Hence my saying that you can't avoid saying something about, when I said God, what I meant is fantastical, metaphysical, and you are already but there. You, you say the same about Ronaldo. No, yes, if you were saying that, you would literally have to build a case for it. I don't see, I don't say, you, you made my point entirely for me. It's difficult to have a discussion, and we've, we've, de we've deviated, but it's difficult to have a discussion, I found, mm -hmm. about Messi, for instance, yeah. and not allude in some way, shape, or form to something out of this world, something, mm -hmm. as you would describe, unseen. Yeah. We don't have those discussions about Ronaldo. We have comparatively more factual discussions about Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. Hear me out, hear me out. Even by the what you just did, you spoke about his talent. You spoke about the context. You spoke about the numbers. Mm -hmm. You brought things that are easily verifiable, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is the discussion about Ronaldo, which if I were to circle back, we were talking about somebody and I said he reminds me of Ronaldo, Jay-Z, Jay yeah. right? In only one sense, right? In the sense that there is something almost mechanical about them, as opposed to, say, Nas, who you would call a god MC which, if I were to loosely translate, would be like a messy. Do you get? They are, two, they are two sort of heavyweights, or big and pack in a sense, in terms of, well, no, big and pack were actually both feelers and, and shit, but I think Jay-Z and us may be a better analogy to explain what I mean. Mm -hmm. There's something mechanical, something almost like, you have to respect them for the shit they've put down, and how they've put it down, how long they've put it down, and what they've put down. Mm -hmm. In that sense, that is how you respect Jay-Z and the same way you respect Ronaldo. And to create a dichotomy to my mind, I'm saying most times, not even just you, but the average person when they speak about Nas or they speak about Messi, it's, it almost always alludes to the fantastical. As you said, Ronaldo hits something that most people can't hit and yeah. Messi hits something most people can't see. Yeah. It's in that sense that I say it. Now, I was going back, why were we even talking about Jay-Z? Because we're talking about Jay-Z for a reason. I'm talking about his, how I don't put him as... Right, you said you find, you find it. So for, I, I guess what I was trying to say is, just off the fact that this person over time keeps putting out enough body of work to be considered, even as he stays rigid, that's depth in excellence. Right? So it may not be breadth, it may not be a wider variety of styles, of deliveries, of, of whatever. It may be sort of one-tracky mm -hmm. and, and mechanical as opposed to sort of really expressive in, in all the, the in, in technical. Um, but that, to my mind, that speaks to depth, right? And he's, he's pretty good at developing a persona that makes you want to listen to him even though he's arrogant. So he's, he's somehow done it. I mean, nobody really likes Jay, like he's not a likable guy. But the argument right. here isn't that Jay isn't all of these things. Okay, what's the argument? The then? argument is that where, where, where Jay has breath, I say, oh, depth. depth rather, right. I can name you people who have both depth and breath. 
Right. So, okay. So which what, is, what which is valuable to me in the end? Right. Okay. So people like who? Let people me. People like Kanye has depth and breadth. Yeah, he, but he's not on the same level as I would consider. Hmm. Rapper? No. Artist. Artist. Rap. Rap. Artist. Okay. Rapper. Whatever you want to call. Okay. It. Now I would consider. Him, I would first I consider. Is, I mean, Kanye is. I would consider him a better better artist than. Jay Z. I would consider Kanye a better artist than Jay Z personally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I would consider Jay Z a significantly better rapper than Kanye. That's 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 fair. The, the, the difference is not that much in terms of of rap genius. It's not that difference. We know Kanye is really good. Come on now. Kanye is really Kanye good. is really good, and Jay Z is really good. Let me tell you the thing it's about not Jay. That let me tell you the thing about Jay. Together. See, I know, but let me tell you the thing about Jay. Jay makes you want to know more shit. One, by his allusions. Mm -hmm. There are things that he alludes to in casual conversation. Even the casual mention of art in all its supposed sophistication is because of people like Jay mm -hmm. who talk about Basquiat. How, who knew about Basquiat? Who was interested in Basquiat before Jay? Yeah. And that, that for me is the defining factor, right? Like okay. he, 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 his art makes you want to evolve. Not necessarily evolve for sake of creativity or expression, but almost on an inner level, he makes he 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 got people talking about investment in rap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's not the first, yeah. But there was a way he put that through that I consider significantly more valuable and speaks to, especially because of because of rap in all its breadth. To be able to take something as boring as the things he likes to talk about, art, and then make it a look that takes some kind of skill. That's number one. The mm -hmm. other thing is. There are things that I, but maybe this is just me. There are things that you hear in Jay's songs, right? It can be three or four years later, you listen to song over and over and over again, and then something happens, and maybe you're watching the news and you're like, that's what that reference was. Like, it's, it almost feels like in many ways, there are a lot of things that Jay says that are gifts that keep on giving, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Kanye, you get, you get the feeling, you, and every time you, you step into that, that moment. You can describe that same thing to Kanye. Yeah. Man, it's a little difficult to do that, man. Is it? Uh... Yeah, yeah. And you know the funny thing? I consider myself, like, I consider my spirit more aligned mm. to Kanye's. Yeah. Right? In terms of how I want to express things. Even in terms of my temperament. Mm. There, there are things that Kanye does, and I'm just like, my nigga, I feel you. Like, mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, no. I've listened, to, I've listened to a whole lot of Kanye. And I can, I can guarantee you this. Kanye may, may be better at expressing... So there's a piece he's trying to paint. He's trying to, even that is even arguable because Jay Z's wordplay. But you know what? Because of Kanye's breath, he gives it more life, right? It's more vivid. But Jay Z can't. Jay Z has a wider area of of discourse to wrap his art around. Okay, let me, okay, let, me let me put mm, like this. Is that is that correct? Yes, I, I want to say that. That is that is that is a, a, a fair point. Although although I'm with you. I cannot say that. Although I can see that applying to Kanye as well, but we can, we can agree to disagree on that. We interrupt this podcast with a message from our sponsor. La Taverna, one of my favorite places to wine and dine. The space is fine and their chefs are top of the line. During the daytime, the natural light is just right but wait until you see La Taverna at night. Intimate, passionate, elaborate. It sits atop the roof of Statement Hotel in Musi 2. I promise you, it's one hell of a view. They serve tacos, pasta, seafood too. And that's just me naming a few. A warning though, you don't finish their food. The food finishes you. Use the code the young god to get a 10% discount at your next visit. Check them out on Instagram at Lataverna Abuja if you need further persuading. Back to the show. For me, another point I'll make about Kanye is that you know how they say Jack of all trades, master, master of none, none, right? But still, better, better than a master, master of one. one. Yeah, that's the end of that statement, yeah. Kanye is a master. Is a jackal. Is, 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 is a master. Of, is a master of one. Yes. 
Or you, you know what? Maybe two or three. Let's say, let's, 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 let's Kanye or Jay? No. Jay. Right. right let's, right. let's give him even more because yeah, yeah. he can't be this good without yeah. having been yeah, part yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. But when we look at Kanye, he's a master, or at least excellent, at a wider range of things. Of course. And in being, in, in doing that, for example, Kanye is, is one of the few guys hmm. who does producing and mastering yeah. and, and rapping yeah. and songwriting. End to end, yeah. Equally well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that way, when he's creating music, yeah, he's creating from a, a different place. Yes. Right? And I think that that distinction yeah. tips by the, tips him over the top, over Jay. By the time you now add in the discography and the, the different styles he has he has he has tried and done well. Yeah. There is not one album of Kanye's that is lazy, yeah. that is lacking yeah. and you know, you cannot relate to. Yeah. And it's not to say that Jay doesn't have that. Jay has that as well. Yeah. But when you start to see the, the little distinctions where Kanye, you know, brings his entire life. For example, Jay, if, if you've looked at Jay now, yeah. ask anybody, apart from businessman, drug uh, dealer back in the day, and head of Rockefeller, you know, and maybe now billionaire, recent, recent Monica, you know, there is, we, we know very little. No, y'all know very little because we know Party J. Big Pimpin was Party J, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay, we, we know like, we know Flexing J. Do you get? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we, know, we know those things, but I'm saying with, with, with Kanye, it's, it's richer in that we know... It's also newer. Okay, but, but can, I, can, I, can I just say this? Because okay. when you actually started by saying Jack of all trades, master of one, um, better than master, master of none, but yeah, that whole thing. The minute you put that on the table, I put my hand up and I was going to say, look, you've put down what I consider superior arguments, right? I can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. And on that level, when you then have to put that and like you say, layer it with the discography and every other thing, mm -hmm. which was my ultimate point. As an artist, I believe Kanye to be greater, mm -hmm. right? Because of the breath, you know what he can do, mixing massive. But let me tell you, as a rapper, nobody give a fuck who mastered that shit. Can you rap? That's how we evaluate rappers. And you see, I started from somewhere. As an artist, or rather, I was trying to say something. As an artist, I rate Kanye above Jay. Okay, so Jay's a better rapper. Yes, that's why I said top, top rappers. Yeah, Jay. Okay, Jay. Top, top rappers. Yeah. Jay, can we say Jay's a better rapper? Yes. We'll say... We'll say Kanye's a better artist. artist. Okay. But I, not by much. Do you know what? Funny thing, when you said the thing about, you know, what he can do really well, I then began to think that perhaps by, by some way, when you, when you paint those things, if he can do those things equally well, right, and you evaluate him on that, the other point is the discography. Like, that nigga has been, he's always been particular about his craft, right? and because he puts all of that energy into it, you can see the excellence that runs through. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is, I now think that he may, I mean, I see the point that can be made for uh, like, uh, like uh, Kanye being a significantly better artist than Jay-Z. Mm -hmm you get yeah so it may even be by some way is what i'm saying it may even be by some way but as when it comes to rap new let's take a moment to pause and breathe relieve the tension whatever you're doing close your eyes take a deep breath in through the nose out through the mouth one more time in through the nose, out through the mouth. Let's resume. Yeah, we can argue, but you know we can't argue when it comes to rap. Oh, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is the best of them all. Do you know what? Lil Wayne is the best of them all. It really depends on what. The funny thing was, okay, so let, let, let me get your sense of this. Where then do you place Drake? Drake. Woo! Drake, 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 Drake is. I won't say Drake is right up there. Do you know I think he is? Do you think he is? Oh, yes, I do. And I know Drake from Comeback Season. Yeah, yeah. Shake up Drake, the okay, Drake, world. Drake that is what I'm about to do. Like, nigga, I know Drake from that time. Drake you get is good. Drake is good. But here's why In I. In fact, Lil Wayne said Drake's better than him. I believe so. Mm. Here's why I believe so. And it's, it's also why, I, I, so there are a group of people in this world, and it's, it may sound random, but there are a group of people in this world that I do not trust. Barack Obama is one of them. 
Drake is one of them. You don't trust them, why? See, at their craft, they, they mm, Barack Obama's one really was because it almost seems like as a person, not much flaws. Family guy, like mm. everybody. What was the worst thing you heard about Barack? Or you smoked weed in, in college? Like it was like, and even when it was, oh, he didn't speak up for gays or something like that. But you know what? That's opinions, yeah. right? As a person, as an individual, speaking up for gays is you know position of authority, responsibility, yeah, societal yeah, yeah. shit. It's front yeah, facing. Yeah, yeah. As a person, that nigga seems cool as hell. Plays basketball, puts out mixtapes. Like that nigga cool. Was the first black guy to become president. Loves his family, shit. daughters. He's cool. Like it's. And he made it out on skates, bro. Exactly, made it out on skate. Ain't no dick sucking that we know of. Yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no scandals. Him and his wife love each other till now. I'm like, I don't fucking trust you, my G. Like, your own is bad. I don't know what it is. No, nah, it's just me being yeah. paranoid, but... Yeah. The other person is Drake. You know why? Up until this, his whole Adonis thing, his son, which is like the worst that has happened to Drake, what, that he had a kid. Like, so what? Like, everybody has a penis. Like, mm. people get pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Musically, I believe if Drake is not an elaborate sociological experiment, he has a team of sociologists who work with him. Because he's so on point with dictating the pace of pop culture, describing relationships with strippers, Describing relationships with girls you are flying in, things that people, exp- ex- you know, the, the, thousands of people have experienced. Yeah. Nobody can just slip it in casually. And he's just like, you know what I mean? And everybody's like, yeah, yeah bitch, we yeah, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are you so on point so frequently for so long? That's science. That's not art. That is science. Is where art meets science. See, no, see, as an, <laughs> see, as an artist, right, you're writing, and he yeah. does, everybody knows he doesn't write his shit. Mm-hmm. So there's a decision-making process. That, in fact, there's a structure that pulls in the talent and all of this shit, and they figure, this shit is good, this shit is not. That decision is based on an agenda. It's something they're trying to achieve. Every management, every label does this. Mm. His system has science inside it. I am fucking sure of it. <laughs> There is, again, I'm a sociologist. I see the precision with which he hits societal things. And every single time since that nigga came out that he started putting shit out when he wanted to, we all followed suit. The things he said in his songs are the things we said. The things he did are the things we did. There were captions everywhere. And he's so... YOLO, bruh. You only live once. I don't know how he did that shit. Thank you. (laughs) And he, do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, fucking right. Hell yeah. There are thousands of <laughs> them. Yeah. Champagne papi. Even though <laughs> everybody was champagne, this champagne. Do you get so he he affects so much of pop culture mm. so well, so frequently, and he has done it for so long mm. that I'm like, there's something inside that you are not saying. There's nothing that nigga puts out. That does it, whether it bangs, whether it gets on the charts, whether it's music that you know makes sense or not. I look at the quality of discourse around his music, and again, not a moral discourse, but I just look at how vibrant it is. Hmm. 3 a.m. in Vegas, all these ideas of faded. That was Drake. Hmm. All these ideas of boys need love, you know, we're just all broke, certified love boy. We will argue from now till tomorrow, but we'll watch those, hmm. his, his, those the lyrics. They're the ones that are making it. Mm. How I'm going, wifey, when you not Aisha enough. He has given us already. If you go, just just Aisha enough. Just go, you'll see yeah. it. How does somebody do that since 2000 and God knows what? In the middle of other guys like Kanye. There's something interesting, especially about how he describes the relationships. It's, mm. it's very precise. Mm-hmm. You know, like 3 a.m. with that stripper in Houston that forgot her. You're just like, ah, man, even me say, if I never do one, but I don't reason now. <laughs> he hits these things. I and mean, it's things yeah. that nobody has ever said out loud, mm-hmm. but people can relate to because yeah. if you've been in the streets, some other shit gonna go down. Do you get So I, I, like the, I like the specificity of he his music. He has a great team around him. Exactly. Who have their, 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 their thumb on the pulse of things. Yeah. They don't, funny thing is, I don't think they, they have their thumb on the I think they, they know how to dictate it. Think of this. He 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 jumped on Migos. Yes. 
He knew what they were about. Exactly. That's the other thing. The way he started picking features. Picking features, yeah. Sampha. He starts picking all these the random weekend. guys. He just picked Thames. Thames. There's something he um, looks for to go into each sound. All these things that he does, you know, artists yep. that he has brought out, bruh. I mean, I am a Conan Tuesday. That that all that's guys, exactly. But he, he has he has a knack for these things. You know? Yes. He has a knack for these and that, that it can't be like if 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 lightning hits a place six times, better go and find out what the fuck is happening there. You can't just say, oh, this is coincidental. It's coincidental. How long is it going to be a coincidence when you realize that it's deliberate? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as in, <laughs> but then again, that's that's all down to mastery, right? He's a guy that has mastered. The culture he knows his role in it and he yep. has yep. he has committed Depth. himself you know to yep fine tuning it and squeezing every ounce of you know content he can out of it i mean and, and that's, that's really what it's what it's about right we see kanye we see drake we see lil wayne and what each of them have done is they have been able to see jay put some words right i mean but, but, but here's the thing with hello you, sir right? introduce mr sean to the equation Reintroduce Mr. Sean to the. I know you will not let me rest if I don't You will. This it. podcast ain't going nowhere to put Mr. <laughs> Sean in the equation. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, you know what? Nubas, Jay's in there. They're one of these guys who have been able yeah. to squeeze out, to know, to understand their role yep. in the game. Yep, and, and it should play it to the end. To yeah. the utmost part. Yep. Bro. It's mastery. Well, surviving do you know what you know you know you saying this thing right is is almost the essence of why i feel like you and i you know are able to have these conversations it's it's about understanding oneself so that self-awareness so essentially emotional intelligence in a sense or situational intelligence whatever you want to call it um understanding oneself and one's role but to do that you have to understand the collective and the collective's goal Mm. Mm. When you understand the collective's goal, you know your role. My God. Bars. <laughs> Bars. Bars. <laughs> See what happened when you're tapping into the, the spirits of Drake and Lewin and Jay? No, well, to be fair, that's me always. So. I mean, yeah. I, 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 got, I got you, I got you. Yeah. Bars. Anyway, so, because when you figure out, like, which direction society is trying to go, then mm-hmm. you know what your role, it, it, you know, is in that moment to get there. Yeah. Right? So it speaks to sort of understanding, to my mind anyway, it speaks to understanding one's role mm-hmm. and then understanding the, the collective and what it's trying to hit at. And to do that, right, it requires, especially like you said, I still have to survive. It requires a certain level of, I don't know what the word is, but it requires a certain lev- level of dogged stupidity. Because I'm pretty sure that people who told them, yo, you need to, you need to switch this up. You need to not do this. You need to not do that. And I'm pretty sure it was like well-intentioned mm. in many ways. Team members, managers, heck, writers, even if, if not your damn self, because mm. there's imposter syndrome that will fuck with you five ways to Sunday. So it's mm-hmm. that. Do you get? I need to roll some shit. Um, but it requires some level of dogged stupidity. And that's kind of hard to come by because for you to be that and to encourage oneself in that. Hmm. Let, me, let me try to rephrase that. I feel like it requires dogged stupidity, but that, that almost requires a knowing of self that a lot of people don't have and don't have the opportunity to explore or don't have the courage to explore because you can't, even if you know what your role is, like you can't be excellent in it until you are sort of almost folded into yourself in that moment. Mm. You're not worried about it. That's, that's in the zone. You sort of forget every other thing. Like the best, the, the most excellent pe- people sort of, lose themselves in the moment when they find out like the essence of who they are and they can walk in that excellence yeah. right the way i like to describe it is i say I, I call it a river that has always existed okay that's how it feels when you're in the zone it just feels like you're just pulled into something in, into a current that just you just flow with and it feels like it's always been there mm-hmm. and you're the one who sort of hops out of it to deal with real life right when you're in that zone knowing yourself and knowing what you can do that well I, I see it, it, it's there, there's something about how you move mm. right that requires that knowledge and that knowledge is challenging to come by because it's a difficult process yeah. um, also because one is changing so understanding what you're good at when you're changing can be a bit of a hassle right but it's also a function of like your emotional maturity 
and your ability to identify what is fear, what is uncertainty, what is just anxiety as opposed to fear, you know, in this. And these things are important because you will have to push through surviving. So I don't understand. I mean, there are ways to cope. You cope with drugs, you cope with, you know, things, but. You know, I once saw a hmm. bee drowning honey. That's very interesting. And I understood. How so? How so? What you're saying, bro, that's what it is. You realize what the, you have honey and you're yeah. drowning that shit. Yeah. You let that, you submerge yourself in your shit and, you know, die in a, in a, in a sense, not in, not in the worst sense of the world, like in the yeah. best sense of it. Yeah. Well, yes. Okay. So in Drown, the, yeah. In that sense, yes, you sort of have to just fold into yourself and just drown in it. That's what you, that's what you described. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, yeah. right, right. So I remember I saw, I saw, I was at a, a uh, farm where in South Africa one time and they brought out, you know, they were getting, doing some honey and I saw a bee in it. He came into it, right. fell into it, and was just moving around for a bit. And then eventually it just, it just went under, submerged. And I was watching it, and at, at that time it meant nothing to me. And I asked, and that time I was what, like 20 or so, or so. So I asked the farmer what, at the time, he had been thought of as a stupid question, but I asked him, right. why is it drowning in the honey? Mm -hmm. You should be able to swim like it's a sting. You know? yeah. right. And then he said something along the lines of, I can't remember exactly, right. but he explained that that is like, Food, like honey, isn't just waste material that honey is produced. Right, it's right. food. It's something that they, right. they, they produce to store for um, winter. Yes. For when there will be right. no food, for when flowers die, that kind of mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. So, it drowning in it is the best possible death. Yeah, right. You know, for the it. worst way would it would be for a bee to sting you and die. And die, right? Fair enough. You know, comparatively speaking, yeah, yeah. So imagine a human being stinging and dying. Like you're dying because you're, you're you're trying to like defend yourself or yes. protect yourself or survive. Yes. There's a sort of mindset that you're in, you right? Die. It's probably right. dies from that. As opposed to drowning, sort of drowning in, your, in honey. your honey, right? You know, right, you right. It. Okay. The context now now helps me understand what you're saying. And yeah. Exactly. You see that that's. Funny thing, that's that's what I am trying to come to terms with while still, while still wading through what is. And there you have it. Things were said, points were made, blasphemy was uttered. <laughs> but that was fun. This is what Annie and I do. Whenever we hang, we go back and forth about all kinds of things, and it always makes sense. And this time, we made sure to put it on a podcast. But what do you think? Who do you think won? Like whose points had your opinion shifting or simply made the most sense to you? You can let me know on Twitter at I am the young God or IG at the young God pod. Annie is also on Instagram at sir underscore Skywalker. Sir underscore Skywalker. Do check out his page. It's really fly. Thanks for listening. Thanks to Annie for joining me. That's a real one. Through and through. Expect to hear more from him in the coming weeks. This was just one part of a much longer conversation. It gets deep. And this...